Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tammy Ernest and I am a long arm quilter and here on my channel I like to share customer finishes as well as my own personal projects. And I'm just going to give a teaser right here at the beginning if you are a Lori Holt or a Camille Ross Kelly or a Lila Boutique fan you are going to want to stick around because just about every one of these quilts <laughs> is either pattern, fabric, or something from those three um, designers so you will want to stick around for that. I have so much to share with you today. I am so excited for today's video. Um, so I have my January so sampler box to show to you. I have some updates on my own personal sewing that I have been doing this week and um, oh, I was just so excited. January has been a lot of fun. I have been trying to reorganize and um, what do I want to say? I just clean up stuff, you know, and I have realized that um, keeping my projects in my enamel tins is not working the best because of the different sizes and things, and um, I'm just not able to keep them as organized as I want. So I have purchased uh, tw those 12 by 12 boxes um, that are you know three or four inches deep I have ordered enough of those to fit all on my shelf so that I can put all of my works in progress inside those and have them nicely stacked on my shelf so that I can see what I'm working on and be able to pull them out keep things nice and organized uh, my husband and I spent some time last night setting up another um, what I want to say like a garment uh, hang up rack so that I can hang up all of the quilts that I'm getting in for um, long arm quilting and I just I am so excited for the organization that has gone on and um, I have set up an ideal week meaning I've set up a schedule for how I want to run my business and my own personal sewing and I've been working through that the last couple weeks and making adjustments where needed to be adjusted and I'm super excited I'm getting things done and things are moving along and 2024 is going to be a fun, fun year. So I'm going to start out today with the Sew Sampler Box. I love this month's box. Love, 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 love this month's box. <laughs> and um, so the uh, card that comes in the top, it says hats off to you. And look at the little hats there aren't they cute this is a hint to whose um, fabric and designer they are highlighting in this month's box it's Lori Holt and I am super excited so on the back side of this is a coupon for Lori Holt stuff um, I may definitely be using that and there is also another pattern on the back here it's actually funny because it's called Je uh, jelly roll jam 2 and it's so it's using a jelly roll which I'm going to show you here in a minute um, but the uh, challenge that I that we have going in our quilt circle membership this month is a jelly roll challenge so it's so fun that there's a pattern right here on the back that maybe I could whip this out real quick I don't think it's going to happen but uh, you know it's just funny that that uh, that was there so my quilt circle membership we started a new challenge for the new year each month we have a, a new challenge and this year we are doing a pre-cut and panel challenge so each month they have a challenge to either use a specified pre-cut such as a jelly roll a charm pack um, fat quarters that kind of thing or it's a specialized panel so I know for February coming up we're going to be doing any panel that is love themed so whether it's hearts or it's actually got a Valentine's Day saying on it or whatever but they um, are doing that for February and so a month is not quite long enough for some people to actually finish a quilt and some have some have finished some small um, baby quilts for the jelly roll challenge this month um, but it's just going to be a lot of fun trying to use those uh, pre-cuts that we have in our sewing rooms or a reason to go out and purchase a new one and also panels panels is one of those things that are so abundant in the in the quilt stores but then we get them home and don't always use them. So uh, my challenge to them this year is to pull out those panels and those pre-cuts and to get those done. So so excited for that. Back to the box. That was a, a diversion there. Okay, so the Sew Sampler box this month, I am super excited because in the box is 
Lori Holtz Mercantile line. Oh, I am so excited. Just love, love, love. If you know Lori's story, she's talked about, I believe it's a grandmother that owned a, um, a the only store, grocery store, maybe. I may be getting this wrong, but um, in their town when she was growing up, and they actually called it the Merc. And so, this is a throwback and remembrance of her grandma and the store that she had there and how um, and Lori was always in the store. So, so, so fun. Now, um, Riley Blake is the, is the um, company that produces all of Lori's fabrics. And Riley Blake actually calls this a roly-poly. So, if you see that term roly-poly, that is Riley Blake's take on a jelly roll where moda uses the the term jelly roll it means the same thing it means a roll of two and a half inch strips all coordinated in um in a fabric line and there's usually 40 to 42 different um pieces in a roly-poly or a jelly roll so just wanted to explain that to you i'm so excited Love, 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 love this. So excited. So along with that, they always include a pattern. Now this pattern is exclusive to the Sew Sampler box. So if you love this haberdashery quilt pattern with all the cute hats that uses this roly-poly um, that is provided, then you will have to get one of the a la carte boxes enable in order to get this pattern. It's not available for purchase outside of the Sew Sampler box. So I did look last night and there are a limited quantity of the January boxes. So you may want to jump on there real quick and get one. Or if you're interested in actually doing a subscription, you may want to do um, an a la carte box for January and then go ahead and sign up for February so that you can start getting these boxes on a monthly basis. Very cute pattern. All right, so the whole box has things from Lori Holt in it. So let me share. They have included, this is new for Lori. I've not seen this before. This is a binding holder. So it's something that you can, when you're picking your projects, when you're first starting a, um, a quilt, perhaps when you first start it and you cut your binding, you can go ahead and press it and then put it onto this. Or perhaps you send your quilts out for long arming and you prepare your binding before you send them off. That's a great idea to do. So as soon as you get that back, you're able to start on your binding. This would be a great way to wrap it around here and hold it. Put a little washi tape or something on here to tag which quilt it's for so that as soon as your quilt comes back from the long armor, you'd be able to um, start on your binding. Now this denim color is exclusive um, to the to the Sew Sampler box. This one is not available for purchase and actually it's my favorite color. They have a set of three of these that are available and they are three different colors and off the top of my head I can't tell you. I want to say like a, a yellow and a green and a pink. Um, a light green like a mint green. Lori's green I guess I want to say. Um, and it comes in a set of three. So really um, nicely priced. These are kind of, they're a, a plastic, almost like a hollow type plastic. Lightweight, great way to keep your bindings. Plenty big, so you'll be able to fit even the, the um, largest quilts that you have. You've got plenty of room there to, to wind that binding around. So very cute. Also in the box is, this cute little bee, uh, Busy Bee Thread Cutter. Now I my package looks a little damaged because I've already cut into it. I wanted to open it up and actually look at this. So a thread cutter is something you can stick onto your sewing machine so that instead of having to grab your scissors each time you need to cut threads or to cut, um, to cut, you know, maybe you're doing strip piecing and instead of grabbing your scissors to cut all of those little pieces apart, you can have this attached to your sewing machine and you can just very simply slide your thread onto it to cut the, the thread apart. That way you've, um, one, you don't need as many hands because you're, you've got your, your um, thread and you can just slide it across. So this does have a sticky back. Um, you know, the little plastic covering a sticky back to it. 
and so you could press that right onto your sewing machine. If you're not wanting to put this on your sewing machine, but instead maybe put it in your binding bag, you could do that or carry with you to retreats or uh, sew days that you have with friends, then this would be a way um, also on an airplane. Um, because there's no point, no um, nothing sharp that can hurt anyone. This is a great thing to take on an airplane because it's a way that you can cut your threads and um, still travel and be cute as well. So really, really cute. This is a fun. This is the first time I've seen these as well. So they may be a new um, product of Lori's. Then also included in the box is this quarter inch plus ruler. This is a Riley Blake design and it ha it's a one and a half, no, it's a one two and a half inch ruler by eight and a half inches, so a nice size. And then you'll notice it's got the little dog ear corner cut off. So this is a great way to cut those dog ears off when you're doing projects that have those. You've got um, that right there to be able to cut this off. Travel size, trim your dog ears with ease, um, handy to have by your sewing machine. It's got the quarter inch all the way around that is colored blue, so you can tell exactly where you're at. Very fun, very fun. Then, <clears throat> you can always use more of these, not that these are Lori Holt, but um, you can always use some more needles. These are Microtex, so they are sharp needles, but they have a very fine point, so very, very uh, sharp. So for silks, polyester, foils, artificial leather, coated materials, very thin, acute point, creates beautiful top stitching, and perfectly straight stitches for quilt piecing. So you obviously can use it for quilt piecing as well, but if you're using any of those specialty fabrics where you need a very sharp needle with a very fine point, this would be a great one. I have linked these down below. So you can always use needles. Then finally in the box is the pressed flowers pressed flowers quilt along. This month we have Bluebell, and I just noticed this on the back. Um, and maybe I need to go back and see if every pattern has this, but it says the best time to plant bluebells is early to mid-autumn, and I hadn't noticed that before. So for each one of the flowers, they give you a little information about it. So I have my fabrics cut. I did not get them pieced before joining you today. So let me show you my pieces. So here is the pattern. This is our 10th block. So we have two more and then we'll be getting the setting instructions for this. And you can see the brown that I've chose and the, and the darker pink and the lighter pink. So I'll be working on that hopefully this afternoon, get that stitched up and I'll, I'll go ahead and bring it back next week to show you my um, block. I'll be excited to get this one done. I can't believe we've got 10 done already and I've kept up with them every month. <laughs> That's a big accomplishment as well. I failed to mention this when I'm when I was talking about mercantile but Lori Holt does have a new quilt along starting and it is called the mercantile sampler sew along. I did print out the picture of what the quilt looks like so many of you will be happy to know this is an all pieced pattern except for the only applique in this one are the, the white circles that you see. I have not, obviously Lori Holt doesn't put out her instructions for the pattern so far. Um, she does have this, um, the sew along guide. She has published that in her Be Prepared post. And in that, she gives you all of the cutting, all of the yardage required and all the cutting instructions. But actually to see how the blocks go together, that will start on January 29th. And it actually runs through April. So um, a good three, February, March, April, three months to do all these. Um, but what she says, this is the only applique are the circles. That's the only so simple shape that you need. And those are large pieces, so it's not going to be a lot of tiny ones. Um, and then she also mentions in the sew along guide that um, because you're doing these blocks and you're putting them on the circles, you can turn different ways. So I'd be interested to see how she's doing this. And um, a really pretty quilt, you can see all behind the White circles is like four different prints on each one of those blocks. And then it has a pieced border as well. 
So if you're interested in joining, that quilt along does start fairly soon. That'll be next week that she starts, but you can order your kit or um, maybe you have scraps uh, that, you know, you have Lori Holt fabrics. Maybe you're not wanting to use mercantile specifically, but you can use Lori Holt scraps and um, are you, you know, leftovers from other projects and create this one. It'd be really pretty. Even if you did just a couple of the blocks and did, um, and made pillow or things like that, made a smaller throw. And the only so simple shape you would need would be the circle. So you'll be able to do this quilt along really easy with um, things that you already have. So you'll wanna go download this, this is free. If you do order the kit from Fat Quarter Shop, then they um, put the printed so simple guide in the box and it's really nice. It's a nice color uh, printout of the pattern, which is really nice. All right, so I wanted to give you some updates on my own personal sewing. I shared a couple weeks ago my plans for 2024, and I am in full swing getting some of those accomplished. First of all is the Somerville Quilt Along. And again, this is with my Quilt Circle membership. We are doing a six-month quilt along, and we have chose the Somerville pattern by Camille Roskelly. And here is a picture of that pattern and January has been all about cutting so for the last three weeks we broke the pattern the cutting parts of the pattern down and we have been um, cutting that I have all of my cutting done and I'll just show that to you real quick so I did separate mine into baggies so that I could keep them um, straight what was what so there may be a little bit of a glare but you can see my colorways these are prints, um, the muted, some of these are Kim Deal, some of them are um, Judy Rosenthal, um, a, um, a variety of designers, but all of the muted colors. So I have those. This one, these are actually the houses part. That's why I marked them with an H there. So these are all houses, all the cuttings for houses. These larger ones are for the border, the chimneys and the doors. I love that mustard color. The gray that you see right there, that's for the chimneys and the doors. So here's some of my fabrics for the stars. There are four smaller stars and then um, one large star in the center. So you can see those. And those are the star centers. And then around the star, you have the same colorway, but a different print. So, so the center star is four colors, and then to make the star, you use another, the similar color, but a different pattern, a different fabric pattern. So that's what these are. So you saw the black in the other one, but this is a different black, and a red, and a mustard, and then a green. And you can see from the pattern how they're four different colors. And then you repeat that in the smaller stars up here. So really fun. I'm going to be doing my border a tad bit different. You can see how she has easy corner triangles around the outside edge. And then she also does it on one corner of the inside edge. And I'm going to leave off that one corner on the inside edge and just have the easy corner triangles around here. And we'll see how that looks. I've chosen the mustard color for my... Um, my cornerstones here at the at the corners so I'm really excited about this quilt along and um, next week is a catch-up week so the week after we'll actually begin piecing and um, these colors are the roof colors so there's 12 houses and so then I've chosen th um, three or four three different colorways for the for the roofs depending on which color house I have. So if I have a black house, I may do a green roof, or if I have a, um, a, you know, a red house, I may do a black roof. I can interchange these. So very fun. So all of those are cut and ready to start piecing. I'm so excited to have that part done. And then I also wanted to share some updates on my temperature quilt. So I am using Lori Holt's, um, what does she call these? Busy Bee Quilt Projects, her pages. I've just put them in a regular um, 
white binder, but I am using this to keep track of my projects. So the very first one I have listed is this temperature, this cottage temperature quilt that uh, Fat Quarter Shop, this is again a free pattern that you can purchase. <laughs> this is a free pattern that you can download. And I have never done temperature quilts before, but this one's um, just caught my eye. I love house um, quilts. And so this one where you're doing all the temperatures for January in one cottage, and then you're moving on for each of the months. Um, I just thought this was really cute. So I told you that I've been keeping track of my temperatures. I am doing the high temperature for the day. And I keeping track of that for this one I am going to use triangle paper so they do mention that in the instructions you don't have to use triangle I'm going to use the triangles on a roll that from fat quarter shop so um you need the two inch half square triangle paper I've never done triangle paper and that's one of the things I wanted to um, try out this year I want to see how it works am I gonna am I getting better blocks by using the triangle paper um, and so I'm going to try it out and this is the quilt that I'm going to try it out on. So to do this one, you needed some um, background sashing and border and then you needed 20 fat quarters, 20 different colors because those 20 different colors will coordinate to temperatures. So the pattern actually calls for Bella solids, which are done by Moda and um, here are the 20 different colors. Now, these are, if you know Moda solids, they're very bright, they're very the solid, um, and they work great for some projects. They're not my colorway. <laughs> and so I'm more of a, a muted, I like, um, you know, you saw my Somerville, I like that kind of color. I do like bright prints, but I don't like them as solid as this. So, while at a quilt store this week, I decided First, I was going to use just um, fabrics from my stash. And then I was afraid that what if I didn't have enough of um, a fat quarter and I, you know, I chose a purple. Was I going to get, you know, was I going to have enough fabric that was going to look good, things that would look good together, um, and then have enough of each one? I just decided it was too much trouble to try to use what I already had. So why not buy some more fabric? So I went looking at different fat quarter bundles to see which ones had, first of all, had enough fat quarters in it that I could create 20 different colors, slightly different shades for the different temperatures. I wanted to purchase a fat quarter bundle so that I knew all of them would coordinate and look nice together. So I did look at some that were actual prints that had different, you know, almost a rainbow of colors is really what it was. I looked at um, a houndstooth one that um, I considered that one. There was another one that I kind of had my eye on that had um, the whole array of colors as well. But in the end, let me show you what I went with. So with this project, not only am I going to be trying out uh, the triangles on a roll paper, I am also going to be trying linen for the first time. So this is Fat Quarter Bundle by Robert Kaufman. This is Essex Collection. They actually have an autumn pack. And then they have, this is called Breeze Color Story, but to me this is a spring pack. So between the two, I have at least 20 <laughs> different um, shades of all of the different colors. This is a linen. Linen is a little different than using cotton. I have been reading up on it to see how best to do it. The, from what I've been reading, it's best to use a little bit smaller stitch length because the uh, weave of linen is more open. It's not as tight as cotton. Another so thing mentioned was the, um, the raveling, the, the fraying of the fabric. So it was mentioned to starch. <laughs> now you know from past videos that I do not starch my fabrics. Um, never done it. And um, so I have decided that I'm going to best press all of these. So to me, that's kind of an in-between. It's not a starch starch where I'm going to be doing them where they're absolutely stiff, but the best press I will, what I, my plan is I'll lay out a fat quarter, I will spritz it with the best press, and then I will go ahead and press it um, with a hot iron. And that way I'm not leaving it wet to dry. I'm actually drying it with my iron, I guess you would say, so that they're available to use right away. 
and by that it should um, shrink them up some if there's going to be some shrinkage in the linens and it'll also help me with the fraying to give it a little more crisp edge as I'm cutting and I'll I'll keep you notified on how I'm doing so I have plenty um, I don't this has 16 pieces it says and this one has 16 pieces so I actually have 32 colors I only need 20 now there are some like gingham prints in here I probably won't be using the ginghams um, so those will pull out some there's not a huge number I mean there's two ginghams there's a white I'm not going to be using the white and then the rest of them I'll just be pulling um, what matches closest what I think with the the pattern that it shows those are the 20 that I'll be pulling out I'll be using the triangles on a roll so I believe the triangles on a roll is six inches wide so this will be a whole new experience all the way around I'm using linen for the first time I'm best pressing for the first time I am um, using the triangles on a roll for the first time so this will be an interesting project but I am sure excited about it so my plan is to have um, by next week's video be nearing the end of January I should have most of the January cottage together and also you have roofs um, for the houses and then you have the trees for any months where you have more than 30 days and so obviously January has 31 so I'll be baking one of the trees as well I did pick um, linen again I wanted to keep the whole um, quilt linen I haven't picked a backing but um, for the background and the sashing this is a white linen it does have a little coarser feel than a cotton but um, I'm excited. I'm excited to try something new. Then I chose, um, one is for, oh, I, I remember. I think what it is, I'd have to go back and look at the pattern. But the main part of the roof is a darker color and then the fronting of the house is a lighter one. So those are my two colors. And then one of these is used for the tree trunk. And then your color of the tree is dependent on the, um, the temperature for that day so you're gonna have different colored of the trees which is so cool because you know as you're as you progress through the seasons your trees are gonna be different colors and I just think that's really neat but one is used for the um, the house let me just look at the pattern all right so here you can see that the the main part of the roof and the chimney are the darker brown and the front facing of the roof is the lighter brown and then the um, tree trunks are the lighter brown as well. And then I did go ahead and purchase enough of the brown to use for my binding as well so that I had all of that. So backing fabric, I have no idea. I'll wait to see when this goes together how I like the linen. Can you put a cotton fabric on the back of a linen project? Um, from what I've read, people are doing that. They're combining the two by best pressing this at the beginning that should shrink up some of that so I don't know it'll be um, it'll be a learning experience and I'll take you along for the ride <laughs> see what I learned from this one but I'm I'm excited about that one so um, hopefully this week I'll get a lot of those I may not have to um, press all of the colors at the beginning because you know obviously here in the winter months we'll be using more of those colors and then I could do most of the shades that are going to be here in the winter months and then uh, so I don't have to have it all done right here at the beginning. So those are progress on my own personal projects. I'm excited for what I've gotten done. Um, in talking about the best press, I am working on um, some secret sewing this month as well. And in that one, I actually, so the fabrics that I'm using for that one, I did use best press and I am, I am liking it. The little bit of a crispness there, not the not the stiff starch that I've seen others. I don't know, maybe I'll progress and I'll get to that point. Um, but I at least have used best press on this other secret sewing that I'm doing and I'm and I'm liking the results so far. I'm, I'm kind of watching it to see does it really save from the uh, the fraying of the fabric or more the just the the little threads you know that I end up with all over my shirt and things and um, to see how it controls that at all so learning experience you know I've been quilting for 20 some years but there's always new things to learn always new processes and new um, products out there and so I'm excited I'm excited about it 
So that's all my personal su stuff for this week. How about we move on to some customer quotes? Sharon's quilt is absolutely beautiful. I love, 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 love everything about this quilt. So this pattern is Lori Holt's Plaid Pines um, pattern. So, so cute. It does use a triangle ruler to um, create the, the trees on here. I do believe that Lori has a tutorial on her website. If I can find it, I will link it down below so you can see how she creates this. But I love the fact um, that Sharon chose a different colorway than Lori Holt's fabrics lines. And I think this gives a whole different feel to this quilt. I absolutely love it. This is more my colorway. <laughs> I love Lori Holt fabrics. I absolutely do, but to decorate my house, they're really not the colors that I use around my house. I just love her fabrics. I'm one of those, there's not too much that I don't like. Um, I love, you know, I, I love a, a range of things, but there are certain colors, I can't decorate my house with a range of things, you know, so I kind of tend to uh, the muted colors in my home, uh, but I do love bright prints as well. I love Lori Holt's prints as well. But I, again, I just love that she has, that uh, Sharon has done this quilt in um, another fabric line. So this fabric line is Lila Boutique. This is her flower pot line. Ugh. I just love this. And there's also some Pambuda fabrics in here from her line, Country Meadow. They go together so well. And what a neat thing for blue trees and the green trees and the tannish trees and then to have all of the, the flowers on them. I just think it is adorable. All of the tree trunks she has done in different fabrics. They're not all the same. That gives a lot of interest to it as well. The combination of large trees and small trees, it just feels like you're walking through a forest. It's just absolutely beautiful. Now for the background fabric, I don't know how well you can see. This is Kimberbell Basics, They're, uh, the dot background here. And I love the fact that she has used different ones. So like this one here is a white background with blue dots. This one is a white background with red dots. And there's a white one with black dots. And that is all the background fabric. But from a distance, it all blends really well. But up close, it gives a lot of interest to the quilt. Um, this one is a different print, a little different white you can see, but it's got green on there. And there are a couple places where she's used white solids as well. I just love it. Love the interest that it adds, the, um, the polka dots. They're very tiny, but the polka dots along with the trees and the colored, you can see even in the border she has done it. So here is a white print with the black polka dots. And then she has done a, um, you know, a mitered edge there so that it doesn't, it's not a stark change, but then it changes to the white print with the blue polka dots. And there's red. So she's used those same prints all the way around the border, which is really cute. And then that line, see the inner border here? I love this rusty brown color. It's just so, so pretty. The background fab, or the uh, backing fabric is also a Lila Boutique. It's from that same line, Flower Pot. This is straight lines. And it's that rusty brown reddish the trunk uses that same print obviously the same colorway is on the front as is on the back so i just like that sometimes you use one print that's used on the front as the backing as well just love it absolutely love it all right let's talk about the pantograph this pantograph is um i'm not sure that i've ever used it on a quilt before 
This one is a free pattern that you can get on Urban Elements. If you are a digital long arm quilter and looking for it, this is a free download. This is called Siren, S-I-R-E-N, Siren. And um, what I like about this, this one, it's got the tight little swirls, but then it kind of opens up. It's not a very, it's almost like a windswept look. So you've got some spirals, but it's not all circular. Um, it kind of elongates the circle part of it and echoes it a little bit. So it adds just that um, kind of that windswept look without being too spiral. We did use a white thread on this because all the background fabric was the white um, background and so that went went well with it. I just love this. And obviously you could make it in Lori Holtz. You could make a spring one, you could make a Christmas one, <laughs> you could make a fall one. Just so pretty, so, so pretty. All right, let's move on to a Barn Star Sampler. For this quilt, we have the Barn Star Sampler Pattern by Shelly Cavana, but we have Lori Holt Fabrics. So this is so fun as well. Like I said, I love Lori's prints as well. I love the brightness and the cheeriness of this quilt. Very summery, it feels like to me. Um, doesn't this look like you would see these Barn Stars on, a, on, on barns as you're driving through the country? I just love it, love it, love it, love it everything about it. So all Lori Holt fabrics. Um, there's some solid whites for some background, but other times it's using Lori's low volume prints like the chick ones right here. And then I like this pattern because it's not all the same white background or variations of the white background. So here we have the pink background with the blue star. Love that. You have large, very large blocks and then you... Then we have very small ones. Here's a yellow background with the red star. Just so Fat Quarter Shop does sell a foundation paper piecing um, kit that you can use for this. Because for this you have square and a square, you have different sizes of that, you have flying geese, you have triangles, um, half square triangles. So Fat Quarter Shop has put together a kit where you can have all of those foundation papers and the triangles on a roll in one kit. Everything that you would need to create this with foundation paper piecing. Not that you have to create the quilt with foundation paper. You can do it um, you know, just by regular piecing. So again, it's what you enjoy, what you're comfortable with, and um, isn't it so pretty? So, so pretty. The backing fabric is a Lori Holt print. It's a small scale floral in the green colorway, a really nice. So again, we've got these big stars on the front, a lot of bold colors, and then we switch to a small scale on the back. It's really pretty to do that together. This is a book that you can buy for the Barn Star Sampler. And um, you may have enough Lori Holt um, leftovers from other kits and other sew-alongs that you've done to be able to do the same thing like Kelly has. Very pretty. So for the pantograph for this one, we chose a traditional Baptist fan. We made it rather large because of the large stars. We did, Kelly didn't want to go too small and um, just quilt it to death. So we made this pretty large, so probably an inch and a half between each of the rows, maybe an inch, inch and a half, so a little larger. We did use a white thread for this to blend in with all the white background, and it's so pretty. You can't go wrong with a Baptist fan. It just um, adds that class in there, hint to traditional, along with the barn, uh, you know, which Lori Holtz fabrics. They're kind of a hint to traditional, um, older fabrics, and um, so pretty. So pretty. Kelly did a really nice job. 
All right, so if you are a Camille Ross Kelly fan, you're gonna enjoy the next couple quilts too. And so pretty. Oh, Kelly's second quilt is the Adore quilt. This is by uh, Camille Ross Kelly. This is using all of her fabric line called Lighthearted. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So <laughs> all of the quilts this week are just super huge. So it's just better if I put overlay some um, pictures of this as I'm talking about it, just so you can see all the pretty fabrics. So the the fabrics in this line are just perfect for Valentine's Day. There are hearts, there are strawberries, there are red and white check, there's pink with red stripes. Just every um, everything to make Valentine's Day absolutely cute. <laughs> so you have some mint greens that go right along with the reds and the pinks and then she has used the white solid for all of the um, the background fabrics. Some of these blocks have these cute hearts in them, making it just perfect for Valentine's Day. So the quilt is laid out with your center star. You've got all of your smaller blocks around the edges, some with hearts. You've got a larger pieced heart, the star in a star. Got some patchwork in there. Just all the mints and the reds and the pinks all together, just so very pretty. For the backing fabric, Kelly chose a, one of the line, one of the prints from the Lighthearted line, and it has little hearts on it, little white hearts on this mint green backing, background, color, very pretty. And then you can see the pantograph we chose. This is called Timeless Hearts. So you've got your hearts and then you've got a couple loop-the-loops there and then it goes into the next heart. This one's super easy to stitch out. It um, nests well together so you can't see the lines from where one line is from the next. We chose a white thread for this because of the front having the white background fabric on the blocks. The white blended really well. Um, just with the whole tone of the quilt. It's just a very light-hearted quilt, and so the the white thread looked really well. Love how the um, the sashing here is, is um, basically fussy cut so that you have all the lines going the right direction. So we have it going horizontal on the sides, but up and down vertical on the other blocks so that it all matches really well. Kelly's done a nice job of keeping it all even and straight. That's not always easy with straight fabrics. She's done a really beautiful job. This quilt measures 84 by 84, so it's a good size. This would be great for um, a bed, a girl's bed. Wouldn't they just love that? So, so pretty. Um, Fat Quarter Shop does sell a kit for this with the fabrics and um, the pattern. And they also sell a backing set. I'm not sure if this is the backing that came with the kit. It might be, but they sell a backing set as well. So everything there that you would need. Very pretty. All right, let's move on to this one down here. Ellen's quilt is another gorgeous, gorgeous quilt. This is a Lila Boutique pattern. This is called Rose in Bloom. 
and the fabric line is called Love Note. This is so pretty. This, so pretty much the same color line as Lighthearted, maybe a little um, toned down, a little muted compared to Lighthearted, but a lot of the same pinks, no reds in this one, but um, you have the lighter pinks, the darker pinks. The green in Leela Boutique's line is a little more, um, tealy color not the bright minty color so but a beautiful beautiful fabric line really cute so the pattern is set up um, in a booklet and it's set up in 10 months so you could use this as your own quilt along for the month of, or for the year of 2024 if you want to so rose and bloom is the name of the pattern and then um, in the fabrics themselves in the love note fabrics um, you have some prints that are Rose in Bloom. This was a Louisa May Alcott book. It was a sequel to Eight Cousins. So some of the prints are um, excerpts from the book and uh, just so pretty. So here's one of the prints with the white, with the black words. You also got green backing background with the words on it. Just so, so pretty. It's just, I love words. I love words, love books. So this would be perfect for the reader in your life. This is basically square. This is an 85 by 85. It radiates. It's a floral pattern, floral um, large pattern. So you have the big flower center to it and the um, blocks radiating out. Very pretty with the uh, patchwork pink flower in the middle and then your teal greenish color um, fabrics around the edge making that whole big flower theme. And also on the back there are even flowers um, down the center, across the center of the back. You see those on the back there too. Ellen has added a quilt label on hers as well. She added it over here on the corner. Very pretty, that'll be really neat. She said this is for a family member um, for Valentine's Day gift. So this is the fabric on the back, a large scale floral print, very pretty. This is also in the Leela Boutique pattern or in her fabrics um, from Love Note. Very pretty. I love the blocks around the edges of the quilt. Um, the piece blocks, very intricate, very pretty. The, the greens and with the pinks, a really cute fabric. Then all of the lighter colors, this is actually a heart print as well. So it's a white background, but you've got little green, blue, pink, and a little darker pink little hearts on there. So from a distance, it reads as just a white or a, you know a, a low volume. And then it, that just adds an extra dimension to have those hearts, colored hearts in there too. Very pretty. Oh, very um, dainty and soft, romantic feel. Very large, again, this would be very pretty on a bed. Look at the flying geese right there. They almost look like they're twirling around. All the piece blocks, so you have some blocks here in the middle. They're just one print of fabric, so probably a six by six square there. And then you've got other blocks in the middle that are actually pieced. Very neat, very pretty. So for the pantograph, she chose one that's called mistletoe. Now I think the name on this is deceiving because mistletoe makes you think it's Christmas and not that this couldn't be used for Christmas. But um, this mistletoe is, um, oh, how well you can see it on the white. Can you see it there? All right, so it's got some spirals out. This, last week we talked about how that twirl pantograph, how it, um, it backtracked over itself as so as you stitched it out and then it when it came out of the spiral it actually went right back over the top of it this one does not so as it comes in as a spiral and then it hits the point and then it comes away from not very big this is very teeny tiny i mean less than a quarter inch there where it's coming away from itself but this is where i talked about last week where you can cross back over your line and it gives the ribbon effect so you can see how it comes out of the spiral and then it crosses over the line so it makes the feel like that ribbon is flipping over on itself and then it comes back out here and it crosses itself again. So it feels like as it's moving, it's, it's flipping over. And you can do this as um, if you're a free motion um, uh, long arm quilter, you can do this. You can practice that 
And, and again, the spiral will change by how big you come out. You can make this a lot larger spiral and come out wider, and it would look like that ribbon was wider. Um, this one was a very skinny one. I like this pantograph too, especially for um, heart type quilts because I think this feather that's in here, right, it gives the hint of a heart without being hearts like on the other quilt that we did. But um, it gives that daintiness and gives just the feel of a heart without it actually being a heart. Love this pantograph. And again, like I said, it doesn't have an overly Christmas feel to me. So the name mistletoe may be misleading it that um, I wouldn't list this under my Christmas pantographs. It could be. I mean, it obviously could be, but it doesn't have to be on those. Very pretty. A white thread, again, because all the background fabric is white. We want to just uh, it to blend in with that. So very feminine, very dainty, uh, just a beautiful quilt. All right, I have one more, and it is a very bright quilt. Ellen's second quilt uses all ca cafe facet, I can't say that very well, cafe facet prints. It is bright, it is cheery, it is lovely. So this was a, um, the pattern is called Paradise and this was put on as a block of the month by the quilt, sh the quilt spot. Uh, the quilt along is over, but you can still purchase the pattern. And the pattern says that you can um, either lay it out as a sampler or you can lay it out as a basic. And very similar to the Barn Star sampler in some ways. And by that I mean there are some large blocks, and it's hard to see up close, so I'll put in some bigger pictures, but there are some large blocks, and then next to that you have nestled in some smaller blocks. So here you see this great big um, one with the yellow squares and then the ye yellow triangles, and then next to it you may have um, more of just a small pieced one. That one kind of finishes that. So some larger squares, some smaller squares, all of the bright prints um, that he is known for. Very, very just bold and, and beautiful. Beautiful piecing. Very pretty. So some of the smaller blocks there. Beautiful fabrics, see the purples there and the, uh, the Irish chain type look on that one. The purples and the blues are also pretty. For the backing fabric, Ellen chose this royal blue minky. Oh my goodness. This is so rich and so luxurious. Oh, it just feels wonderful. The rich blue color of this, along with those um, prints on the front, is a match made in heaven. Those are just gorgeous together. So I think it's best to see the pantograph on the minky. This pantograph is called Paisley Feather. This is also a new one um, that I used this week. So Again, some of these are very similar to each other, but they have just a, a tad bit different dimension so that they can strike you a little different for different quilts. So this one again has the, um, the tight spiral and uh, again has a tight spiral, but then we have several feather type, um, you know, motifs there that come out. You do it a couple times so just done in a different pattern, it creates a little different. Um, and then the paisley I like, because we've got the, the feather and then we almost have this paisley-like loop that goes around the feathers, that's really cute. So now for the thread for this one, we actually went with a medium gray. With all of those bright prints on there, anything white or cream was just gonna stand out. So we wanted something that really blended with those. 
the um, the character of this quilt is in the is in the fabrics and in the pattern. So the the pantograph needs to just blend into the background and really on the front you have to get really close to even be able to see it. And by using um, the medium gray thread, it just soaks right into those colors. It doesn't stand out. It's not going to take away from the the prints and the and the brightness and the boldness of the pattern itself. And then on the minky. Like I've said before, the thread just soaks into the minky, so you do not even see the color on the back. All you see is texture. Um, and the gray just really, you know, I you cannot see it. <laughs> it just looks like texture there at all. If I'd used a white thread, it might show up a little bit more, but um, we just want that texture, and that is just perfect. So the medium gray thread which is, you know, a lot of times the, the medium gray and the dark gray, you don't use those on too many quilts. The light gray I'll use a lot. I think it's a pretty neutral color. Um, but prints like this, you know, you have to be pretty bold and bright to be able to use those darker gray colors and not, uh, not see them. Absolutely beautiful. Very rich and bold. Love that, love that. So that's my quilts for this week. That's my progress on my own personal projects this week. I hope you are making lots of time to quilt. And if you need help with long arm quilting services, my information is down below because every quilt is worth finishing. We'll see you here next week.